important for us to understand. I really want to get this through to people who are listening. It is because Farrakhan, through Islam, for many decades, have actually gone into communities to build up the black communities, not only in prisons, but also in, you know, a lot of these uh, progressive run cities like Chicago and New York, Baltimore, where there are big sects of the nation of Islam. Now, I am not a supporter of all of what Louis Farrakhan says, okay? I just want to make that very, very clear. However, you cannot deny that throughout his career, he has sought out to actually build people up from low-income neighborhoods, really give black people, you know, some economic pushes or at least help them to get back on their feet, especially in the prison system. And this is not something that people will talk about. This is not something that a lot of people even know if you don't really listen to Louis Farrakhan because, hey, everybody deems him as an anti-Semite, people deem him as a racist, a bigot and all that. But if you look beyond his speech, right, Farrakhan is not advocating for people just being killed on his behalf, even though things are get taken out of context, similar to Alex Jones. But he has helped his communities. Even people like Tamika Mallory, right, who is a staunch leftist, has to acknowledge the fact that it was because of Farrakhan that she was actually brought up in these communities that empowered her, that really actually gave a place for black people, which is why they have so many supporters, and that's why they are still very, very impacting in the black community. Peace. I saw that Facebook and Instagram have banned the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and saying that he, you know, he's dangerous. And you have to ask the question, dangerous to who, dangerous to what? And so I wanted to offer up my personal testimony to give insight into dangerous to who and dangerous to what. Um, I am a Caucasian. Obviously, I have a Caucasian man. I have six Caucasian children. I don't fit the profile of somebody that is supposed to be learning from the Nation of Islam. However, I was brought into the teachings by Dr. Khalid Mohammed. Uh, again, it was not a uh, lecture that was meant for me, but I had never heard a man talk like that before, and I desperately wanted to know what he was talking about. I was raised 40 miles outside of New York City, hardly ever saw black people, anybody of color. I think there were only a handful of even Jewish kids in our school, and I didn't realize that my life was like that on purpose until I was 20 years old. So growing up for 20 years in a Truman Show like reality where everything was orchestrated just so, so like you didn't see the cracks in Caucasian society and you just kept continuing it. I was not that kid. I never really fit in well. And so when I heard the voice of Dr. Khalid Mohammed, I really had to know what he was talking about. So thankfully, there was plenty of lectures out there from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and I for the first time ever, felt like I had a minister, I had a spiritual guide, I had a director showing me love, teaching me. He's the one that taught me about Jesus. I was this uppity, rebellious, uh, liberal white girl. You know, I didn't have any respect for people in religion. I didn't have any respect for scriptures. He taught me everything. He taught me to respect all cultures and religions. He taught me so much. And this is slander, and it is the farthest thing from the truth about everything that is being said about the honorable. And if you think about using the language, you know, hate group and dangerous, there's not any actual facts to back that up. That's, at this point, it's just, you know, slander. It's just something that is rhetorically said to just scare you away. Like, oh, there's nothing to see here. But if you think about like the power of one two hour lecture on VHS had on me and, you know, Dr. Khalid Mohammed didn't have any love for Caucasians, nothing but fire, but yet that had the impact to completely change my way of thinking and really transform how I critically thought about all things that I had ever been taught in my whole life, that's the danger, right? That your mind is gonna get free. And so I've never actually been near a Muhammad's mosque. I've only had VHS tapes, cassette tapes, yes, I am that old, and DVDs, and now you know live streaming and interacting on social media. So I get the chess move, I get why they're doing that, but it's laughable. You can't shut this down. It's not your time, your time's up.